Okay, so stage one, which is the last stage. You can only make the king in the corner that matches the bishop's color. So I purposely put the king on the far corner so that we need to do the last phase. So the first phase, which is actually the harder part, is to force the king to the edge of the board. Then the easy part is to force the king from here to here. Now, what you need to remember, and once you have got this nailed down, you can't possibly get it wrong, is that your knight is going to go in this pattern, which the arrows don't really do justice to. And if you step out of this pattern with the knight, it means you screwed it. Metabolic error, I will get to that after. First, we force the king here. Of course, it doesn't work there. So the logic is quite simple, by the way. So when you are chasing the king from here to here, obviously it goes black, white, black, white, black, white, Mr. Captain Obvious. So what you want to do is that you always want to control the dark squares with the knight and the white squares with the bishop. That's the most economical way to distribute the power of the pieces. So now the knight is denying the king to go back. It has to go this way. Now you follow. Now the king is trying to stick around here. So your job now, and it's very good if you break it down like this in your head. I took that square away. Now I need to take this square away from the king. That's a white square. So you need to use your bishop. Now the king went there. You go like, right. Now we got uh, this one covered. I need to take care of this one. And so now you move the knight here. I'm going to first show you what happens if they play really badly and they go back here. The real challenge is this. If they go back, knight goes here. Remember the knight started here. I'm following the pattern. King here, king here, king here, king here. Force moves. King goes back because it doesn't want to go there. It wants to go here. So now your job is to take this square away. Now, because of I don't like to give checks anytime I do this, I'm going to go on the longer route just to show you how it's done. I could have given check, but I chose not to. And the bishop covers the dark square, the white square. Rinse, repeat. Now the knight needs to cover that square, so we are going to go here. Remember, we went this way. Knight here, king here. Now the king can't escape here because the knight covers that one too. So it will eventually have to walk back. Actually, no, I, that's, no, I want to be more thematic. I go back, check, because that would have been too easy. Here, here again, no, the knight took away this square. The bishop was covering that one, so the king couldn't go that way, had to go that way. Tag, tag, tag. Now again, take away this square. And now you are literally done. So we have done knight here, 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 here. And you don't do this. Instead, what you do is you come back. Because what you want to do is that whilst the bishop covers this, you want to give a check with the knight here. The king can go that way. And now it's made. That's the kindergarten version of it. Now comes the only trick in the whole business, for which reason we need to go back to the beginning. Check he, 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 here. King here. And when the knight comes here, instead of going back, the king goes here. And now you go like, ah, oh, we screwed it. The king is going to escape to the other dark corner. And this is the pattern that you must know. And again, it's super dumb easy to remember because you do the exact same as you would do otherwise, which is that you follow the knight pattern. So again, the knight went here, here, here. I'm doing the exact same thing. And the idea of this move is, is that now I'm covering these squares so the king can't escape. It's going to try to escape here. These are covered. These are covered. So it's only way to run is that one. And now you pull the bishop back here. And all the squares are covered around the king. If you don't know this, you will fail a hundred times out of a hundred at giving knight's bishop mate. 
this is the crux of it. If you don't know this, you're done. If you know this, you will do it every time. And again, it's super easy because you do the same thing. That you do the knight dance all the way, irrespective of whether the king goes this way or that way. But if they go up there, obviously that's the easier way to deal with. I already showed you that. So let's go with king here. Um, knight across, king here, king here, king here, knight here. King up and bishop back. And again, note how I took all the squares away from the king. So there is no other way now to go. Actually, I will highlight that too so that you see that even this escape route doesn't exist. No choice but to go back. Now from here on you can do whatever you want. I usually like to come here. I don't know if the computer would approve or not because then I'm covering all these squares. King goes back and now you are back to what I told you. Knight covers this, the bishop will cover that. So king here, we cut off the escape square, bishop covers that. King here, knight back. King here, knight here. If the king goes here, don't worry, it's fine. Can't escape there because the knight covers that. You already prudently covered this, and now you are already done with boxing in the king. Now, one thing that you need to remember about the, the last phase, and this actually helps a lot with uh, two bishop mates too, is that imagine this position without the knight being on the board. So what that means is that the bishop-king duo actually locked in the black king onto these two squares. That's all they have. And so the general rule of thumb is that from this point on, you don't move either until you actually go in for the mate. And so now we can't go here because that's a stalemate. So you just keep the diagonal with the bishop waiting move, check and then mate. And that's that. Now, the difficulty and no one ever bothers working on this one, which is actually the only part that is worthy of working on, is to how to get to the corner, man. Uh, Elonka, thank you for the follow. So let's have a look at how this looks like. So what you do here, there are multiple ideas that are very, very handy to know. But um, what I really like to do, and I really like to drill this into my students' head, is, is this setup. So easy to remember, man. So easy to remember. Um, it's just very, very simple. Every single time you have this, the king must go back. It can't go even sideways. And from that point on, the idea is to constantly repeat that pattern. So now I go here. If the king goes here, I repeat again. If the king goes here, now I would bring the knight. Now I have cut off, cut off these squares. Remember, the king doesn't want to come this way because that's the maid zone. So they are now either going to have to aim for this corner or that corner. And so since this looks impossible, the best, most logical thing I can do is to linger around the center until I'm forced to the wrong corner. So now I'm coming for you. Yeah, you go here. And now I'm coming here because I want to repeat the pattern I showed you. And so if the king goes here, I'm coming for you. Now logic would indicate that you go here because once again, you want to stay close to the dark corner, not to the white corner. So king d6 is far less logical here because that moves the king closer to that corner. And so the king goes to f6. And now again, I can go either way. Um, doesn't really matter. I can go both ways. King here, here, and now you use the knight to take away the dark square. Which is again, remember this too. Usually you want to distribute your forces in a way that the knight always tries to take care of the opposite colored squares than the bishop. So now if you look at my pieces and how effectively they control squares, then you realize that the bishop knight duo is very effectively cutting off this here. And if the king were to go back, check again. 
that covers that. And so now the king has been again denied a lot of squares even without me using the king. And so the king is forced to go here and again I'm using the base motif. King goes back, I follow. King goes here. Um, and now I want to take this square away from the king. That's a dark square. So I'm using the knight. Okay, king goes here and now it will no longer be able to go there. Um, now you can do a bit of a trickery. Check this out. King here, king up, king here. Look again at the beautiful cooperation of the knight bishop duo. So now I managed to switch the king over to the other side because I noticed that the king is uh, already cut off from these squares. And so now, again, I have achieved my dream scenario and the king is finally in the corner. And all you need to do now, actually, you shouldn't go here now. You have no reason to. You should come here. All you need to do now is to put the knight on the correct circuit. And lo and behold, we arrived in stage one that I showed you in the beginning of this video. And now the mate is pretty basic. The exact same motif that I showed you. Knight, bishop, king, cuts off everything. <laughs> that rhymed, baby. And that's that. And that's that. So the the easier stage is actually the first part that I showed you when the king is in the corner. And the harder part is the method to force the king to the wrong corner, then put the knight on the correct circuit, and then away you go. But as you could see it, it's not that hard. It's basically just recognizing the patterns. So if you give yourself a bit of time to think about how to maneuver your Bishop and Knight so that they cooperate nicely enough. I don't think it should give any headache at all. And on that note, I'm going to call this off now. If it goes to YouTube, thanks for watching. And I will be back with more. Bye.